Good evening, Lake Orion. Welcome to History Now here on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Taramina. Welcome back. It's been a while. I mean, everyone wonders how I've been doing these past... The last time I filmed the show was October. And, um, you know, it's been crazy. But, I mean, hope everybody's well. Hope, the, hope everybody's doing good. Um, you know, been staying busy with um, working being involved with athletics and writing. I'm actually writing a, a couple of um, short stories. It um, keeps a lot me busy, keeps a lot of my time, keeps me busy. Um, I want to talk to you guys about today. I want to focus on a certain sub, on a couple certain subjects that are going on. Um, in hockey right now, we have the Dallas Stars playing the Minnesota Wild. That is one of the playoff matchups in the NHL playoffs as of current. And there's actually quite a bit of history between both the Dallas Stars, the Minnesota Wild, and actually particularly the entire, the, the, they were both linked to this organization called the Minnesota North Stars. And um, there has been obviously a lot of history about, um, about, the, about the move to Dallas and how the, and I just want to go into a little bit detail filling that out, and um, we'll go from there. So here we go. All right. So one of the biggest things that gets brought up, I mean, we, we talk about great rivalries in the NHL. We talk about the Edmonton Oilers and their rivalries. We talk about the Colorado Avalanche, one of the greatest hockey teams of all times versus the ugly looking Detroit Red, Red Wings. Ugh, they're like dead wings to me. Um, we also talk about other rivalries as well, the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Florida Panthers, or the, you know, the the Battle of New York with the Rangers and Islanders, or the the Boston Bruins, and you know, so. But I wanted to, this one was unique because this continues to impact two two towns and two hockey teams to this day, and that is the Dallas Stars and the Minnesota Wild. And it all started with the Minnesota North Stars. All right, so here we go. The Minnesota North Stars were founded in 1967. They are not an original six team, okay? I just will let you guys know right now, they are not a member of the original six. The members of the original six are teams that include the Red Wings, the Black Hawks, the Maple Leafs. You know, those are, those are, those are teams that were part of the original six. The North Stars were not that. They were founded in 1967, and they ended in 1993. Now, it's important to go into understanding the, the end of the North Stars was brought up by a developer, a shopping mall developer and owner named Norm Green. Norm Green bought the North Stars in 1991. He was he originally had a share in the Calgary Flames before the NHL pressured Norm Green into getting rid of his shares. So as a result, he ended up buying the North Stars in 1991. There was some there was some seasons where the North Stars did struggle. There was the there was some issues with poor attendance. There was some strings of con. There was also there was a string of losing seasons that was going on with the Minnesota North Stars. They struggled to get fans in the seats. There was also struggles with stadium deals in in, in Minneapolis or St. Paul. They played at the Met Center, and um, obviously, when you're not bringing fans into games, you run the risk of losing. And losing your fan base, and not just losing your fan base, but you know, you you run you run the risk of losing sponsors and advertising, and you know, money's money. It it costs a lot to field a team. It just goes with any sports team. Okay, so there was some there was definitely some other things that happened as well back in 1991. The North Stars jersey was primarily green. Um, at that, t also today, green is the primary color of both the Minnesota Wild and the Dallas Stars. Even though the Dallas Stars use victory green, victory green, 
but they, but nonetheless, both their pri their primary colors were green. But in 1901, black was introduced to the North Star's jersey. So you have the concept of green, which was the primary color, and then you also have gold, which was the side color, or yellow, mostly gold. So now you're adding black, okay? So the primary, so now you have the colors of green, gold, and black being added to the Minnesota North Stars. And there was some controversy because the primary color for, when you think about back then in the early 90s, the primary color for the Minnesota North Stars was green. I mean, you look at teams like the Detroit Red Wings, their primary color is, guess what, red, you know? Um, back in the 90s, there was some backlash about trying to add black as a third color for the wings. But the, but the wings' primary colors are red and white. And, um, but black was introduced to the North Stars jerseys. And as a result, there was a lot of backlash, a lot of anger that green became that green was no longer going to be the primary color, but that black became the primary color. And, you know, when they, when they did the move, black was the primary color. There were some other controversies. Um, Norm Green did say that poor attendance was a factor. Now, yes, fans were not coming to games, but you have to wonder, was it cost? Was it... Was it was it was it cost? Was it the fact that the team was not good? Um, you have to wonder about was were some of those factors into the decision, because you know in the end you're businessmen. So Green did state that there was poor attendance, along with a string of losing seasons. Now yes, around the late, around the around the ninety around the early nineties. The Stars had had some struggling years, but they also had one year where they went to the Stanley Cup Finals. And um, so there definitely was a year where they were very good, but also the failure to reach stadium deals in either Minneapolis or St. Paul, which there was some controversy about that because the both the, the mayors of Minneapolis and St. Paul felt that they had reasonable deals, but there it was not... To, it was not nego in a way. It was not. It was a f failure to reach a um, compromise between the between the the towns of Minneapolis and St. Paul and the Minnesota and the Minnesota North Stars. So that's from Norm Green's perspective. Okay, there was also a sexual harassment lawsuit that was filed against Green. So he was also dealing with that at that time. And his wife had threatened to leave him unless he had moved the team away from Minneapolis to avoid the media pressure that was going on. So this was definitely another factor that was going on was that there was a sexual harassment lawsuit that was going. That was a big time PR disaster for Norm unless Norm decided to move the team. Because that was what they were talking about in Minneapolis at that time, was they were mentioning the, the sexual harassment lawsuit that was filed. He has obviously having to deal with a lot of stress. So, and to this day, Norm Green is very much vilified in Minnesota for making the move to move, is making the move from Minnesota to Dallas. And... Green was very in, but he did do some good things for the North Stars. He drafted a young player named Mike Madano. He was drafted the first overall pick in 1988. He became the captain of the North Stars. And when Minnesota made that move down to Dallas, he was still very much the captain of the Dallas Stars. So when that happened... The decision was made to move to Dallas. That at that time Dallas was was very much was was south. There was not a big hockey hub. That's a big thing. They were not a big hockey hub at that time, and it was very controversial because you see Minnesota is one of the more when you talk about hockey 
Minnesota is definitely a hockey town, a hockey state. Where, and then you're making the decision to move the team from, from what essentially is a hockey hub to a, ta- to a state where there's not a lot of hockey there. So it was definitely a very different experience from moving it from Minnesota, from Minneapolis to Dallas. Um, it's definitely one of the more questionable moves. But in Norm Green's mind, it was still, it was a move that had to be done. And he's still very much beloved in Dallas because he made the move to go to, he made the move to go down to Dallas. But at the same time, he earned, so when you, when you go, when you see Norm, when Norm Green goes to games, he's still very much loved in Minneapolis, or in Dallas, excuse me, but he's still hated in Minnesota because he moved them down to Dallas in 1993. And, and, they, and, they also, and they had the, so as a result, the Stars went to Dallas and one of their first games was against the Detroit Red Wings. Um, and Minnesota just did not have a hockey team for seven years. So when we come back to history now, we're going to talk about the findings of the Minnesota Wild here on History Now, here on ONTV. Orion Township invites you to visit the Orion Center on Saturday, June 3rd from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. to shop for bargains at the Community Garage Sale. Why spend the day driving around when you can visit dozens of vendors in the parking lot offering a wide variety of items? While that's going on outside, the Antique Toy and Comic Expo will be taking place inside the Orient Center with vendors offering collectibles, toys, antiques, comic books, and more at great prices. From 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., Shred It will be on the grounds to shred documents. There is so much going on at the Orient Center on June 3rd, and parking at admission is free. For more information, you can call 248-391-0304, extension 3500, or visit orionparks.com. Welcome back to History Now here on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Tiramina. Um, we want to talk about the, now at this time, the, the North Stars have made their move to Dallas. They got rid of the, North, of the North name, so now they're simply known as the Dallas Stars. Their captain is still is Mike Madonna, who was drafted overall by Norm Green in Minnesota and was the number one overall pick. So now they've made the move to Dallas. Okay. So now Minnesota, now Minneapolis, Minnesota is now struggling with not having a hockey organization. There was some backlash about, there was a lot of backlash about the star, about the North Stars leaving for Texas. Okay. So there was moves to bring in an old franchise to Minnesota in the mid nineteen in the mid nineteen nineties. At this point, the Winnipeg Jets had left had, had dissolved. Okay, so they were moving out to Arizona to be the Coyotes, to be the Phoenix Coyotes, and um, St. Paul's Mayor Rob Col- Norm Coleman did a campaign to bring in either an old franchise or to create a new expansion franchise. And one of the ideas was to bring in the old Winnipeg Jets into Minnesota and potentially become either the Minnesota Jets or become someone else, something else. And unfortunately, the deal fell through and when the old Winnipeg Jets were able to go to Phoenix and become the Coyotes. Now, in 1997, on June 25th, 1997, Minnesota was rewarded an expansion team. The NHL at that point was considering expanding from 26 teams to 30 teams. And one of those... One of those who was granted an expansion team was Minnesota. It angered Dallas. At this time, the Dallas Stars 
was right up there with the Detroit Red Wings, the Colorado Avalanche, and the St. Louis Blues as one of the more premier teams in the Western Conference. So to have, so for them, to, for Minnesota to get an expansion team, it angered a lot of fans that were very, that were very proud Stars fans. And because they felt that, the, that Minnesota had their franchise, that they, that they dropped the ball, they're now in Dallas now, Minnesota didn't deserve a franchise, okay? So when they found out that Minnesota was granted a ex expansion team, many fans in Dallas were not very happy about that at all. So Jack Sperling was, this, this, it was a CEO, Doug Reisberg was the general manager, GM, Todd Lewerke was the president, and Martha Fuller was the chief financial officer of the expansion Minnesota Wild. Now, they got the expansion team in 1997, but they did not become the Minnesota Wild until 2000, okay? They had to go through vote, where it ended up being the Wild. They decided on colors, which was primarily green, gold, and then red was a third color. Um, but notice what I said, primary color. Minnesota's primary color was green, okay? Guess whose other team is primary green? That was the Dallas Stars, okay? Even though black is considered their color, green was also right there too. Many in Dallas felt that green was, there, was the primary color as well. So there's that direct clash when both teams felt that green was their primary color. In 2000 at this point, Madonna still the captain of the Stars. The Stars had just won a Stanley Cup in 1999, beating the Buffalo Sabres in seven games. Okay, Dallas was pretty much the top team in the NHL, having overcome both the abs and the wings, both the Blues, and they were, they were very much the top team in the NHL. So Minnesota was this expansion team. Dallas was pretty much top of the food chain in the Western Conference. So, you know, so when you look, when Stars fans looked at the Wild, they're like, eh, ugh. They're just a small up-and-coming team. They're just an up-and-coming, a small up-and-coming franchise, okay? Now, the first game, one of the first games for the Wild was against the Stars. The first Stars visit to, the, to Minnesota, to Minneapolis or St. Paul, was, they had 18,000 fans show up for the game. Very emotional game. The, as I said, at that time, the Stars were the top team in the Western Conference. And it was a very emotional game type of game for them because this was the first time that the Dallas Stars were coming north to St. Paul to play the, this expansion Minnesota Wild team. And as a result, it was a 6 nothing shutout win for the Minnesota Wild. The Wild beat the Stars the first time they played. That was a very emotional win for the Wild. Was it a tough loss for the Stars? Yeah. But that year, Dallas went to the Stanley Cup Final where they, lost, where they lost to the New Jersey Devils. The Stars were still one of the top teams in the, in the, NH, in the NHL at that time. So then we would see where the Wild would start getting better slowly, but surely the Wild would start developing their own rivalries, including one with the Avalanche, which is very well documented as well. Um, even though their primary rival is the Stars, they did develop some other rivalries as well. Um, but Dallas and Minnesota would first meet in the playoffs in 2016. And it was a very emotional series. The Stars won that series in six games. Um, sometimes you have to go with the mindset that, hey, rivalries are good. It's good for hockey. And... Um, you have to wonder, was it good to bring a hockey team to Minnesota? Looking back at it, I would say yes, because, you know, rivalries are good. It's good for business. It's good for, it's good to have a hockey team in 
St. Paul and Minneapolis and Minnesota. You know, it definitely bring it definitely it's an it's an emotional atmosphere and, and the wild are feeling a pretty good product. And um, right now the at present the stars and the wild are meeting again in the playoffs in 2023. Um, you know, it's just it's nice to see both franchises are doing very, very well. And um, hopefully this rivalry will continue. Um, you can't ever forget the history. Um, Norm Green, what he did, he basically, he's kind of the catalyst behind the Dallas-Minnesota rivalry. Um, as I said, he, he, he moved the North Stars to Dallas, basically d killing off the Minnesota North Stars franchise. But it's nice to see that, that the NHL rewarded Minnesota, their own expansion franchise, whether they angered Dallas or not. Um, you know, it's nice to see that the Wild and the Stars are resuming this rivalry again, and then they're also meeting in the playoffs at present. So hopefully we'll find out, we'll find out more about the Wild and the Stars in, future, in the future to come. All right, that'll do it for History Now. You guys take care. See you soon. Take care.